Man, will you stop moving around? All every, every night, you're just bumping into me. Sorry, honey, I can't fall asleep. Is this happening? Isn't it annoying? You're sitting there, actually, you're not sitting there, you're laying there. They're sitting there, you're trying to sleep, and they keep rolling around, bumping into you, kicking you, and sometimes you find yourself on the floor. You wanna put them on the floor. Can't fall asleep. It's a big problem. Maybe you have it, maybe you're pushing your person next to you on the floor and irritating them. Doesn't matter. Somebody you know, maybe yourself, can't fall asleep. There's reasons why you're not falling asleep. Obviously, there are a plethora of reasons of why people can't fall asleep. I'm gonna be discussing just a few, but these few are pretty prevalent. So let's get started. There are neurotransmitters which keep us alert. We need to keep alert so we can talk and produce videos and listen to videos and stay attentive during them, and also so you can drive and not fall asleep and other things. So neurotransmitters to keep you alert are important at the right times. Now in the evening, as the sun goes down, our alertness tends to also go down and the body has evolved over time to increase melatonin. So when the lights go down, our melatonin levels go up. And also in the evenings, our cortisol levels tend to drop. So cortisol levels in the evening drop, our melatonin rises. If your melatonin isn't rising because you have lights on all over the place, your melatonin isn't gonna rise and you're not gonna be tired to fall asleep. If you're reading your Kindle or your eBooks with that big bright light, that bright light is inhibiting your, me your melatonin production. That's a big one. Now, let's get to some other reasons why. There are neurotransmitters which keep you alert. There's glutamate, there's histamine, there's dopamine, and there's norepinephrine and epinephrine. These are alert. They need to be broken down so you can fall asleep. Let's talk about glutamate first. If you're eating high glutamate containing foods, you're gonna be pretty alert. So try to limit your glutamate containing foods prior to sleep. Look it on the internet, nutritiondata.self.com. It's in the notes below, and you can go to that website and you can look for the amino acid glutamate and look for foods that are high in it and try to limit it. Now, glutamate can also be broken down with magnesium and vitamin B6 and niacin. These three nutrients are known to support the breakdown of glutamate. What's glutamate break into? GABA. GABA is the feel good, slow down neurotransmitters. GABA is fantastic, but if you take GABA, you might still not be getting rid of your glutamate. So take the glutamate, transform it into GABA. If you're taking just GABA, then you still have this glutamate and you're feeling kind of tired and wired and your body doesn't know what the heck to do. So convert the glutamate to GABA. Magnesium, B6, and niacin. Wonderful things. Now, let's look at histamine. Histamine intolerance is exploding. There's an article for that below. And there's also videos that I've shot about histamine intolerance as well. It's a big issue, especially those MTHFR or methylation issues. So if you have elevated histamine, try to reduce your histamine containing foods prior to sleep. Now you're starting to wonder, well, what should I eat? I'll get to that. Lower your histamine containing foods and support your methylation during the day. Try not to support too much methylation during the evening because you don't really know what the methylation is gonna do and it's not easy to target. But again, magnesium is very useful and so is B6 to help lower your histamine. Hmm, it also lowers glutamate, doesn't it? Handy, two for one. Norepinephrine and dopamine also require methylation. So magnesium is very supportive of methylation in order to get rid of your dopamine and your norepinephrine. I said magnesium for three neurotransmitters. Do you think magnesium helps you sleep? Possibly, huh? So magnesium prior to bed, vitamin B6 prior to bed, and a bit of niacin is pretty magical. Now, other things you should do. What other neurotransmitters support sleep? A bit of serotonin converting into melatonin. So how do you get your melatonin? How does your body naturally produce melatonin? Tryptophan. Tryptophan comes from what? carbohydrate containing foods. If you eat a bunch of protein, you're producing your dopamine and your epinephrine and your epinephrine. If you're taking your tryptophan, you're getting your calm, 
serotonin, and melatonin neurotransmitters. So you ever wonder why you get sleepy after eating carbohydrates? There you go, you're producing a lot of melatonin. Ever wonder why you gravitate towards your carbohydrates? Well, maybe because you're depressed and you wanna spike your serotonin and feel better. Now, depression has a lot of issues, but that's one issue. So, prior to bed, you can take your magnesium, your B6, your niacin, and eat a bit of a carbohydrate snack, something that's not a highly glycemic index because that's just gonna spike your blood sugar and keep you up. So, look for something like quinoa or wild rice or some uh, root like uh, wild yam or sweet potato, but and put some ghee with that and to slow the glycemic index. So, in summary, to support your sleep and the person next to you, to get them to sleep, magnesium, B6, niacin, a bit of a carbohydrate, reduce the protein, redu reduce the glutamate containing foods, and risk reduce the histamine containing foods. Hope that helps you fall asleep. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about this. ShyCon 2015, have you heard about it? You just enjoyed this video, I hope. You're excited about it. This information is very clinically relevant to you and your patients. ShyCon 2015 is an upcoming conference in October that you can't miss. There's 400 like-minded people like me, like yourself, that want to know more about how to optimize the health of your patients. You have four days of it. You have 400 doctors who are wanting to get more information on this and do what they need to do and transform medicine and transform the health of your patient and transform your practice. ShyCon 2015, you can do it. Learn more at seekinghealth.org. Thank you.